Good morning, everybody. This is Michael with Fouch Fabs. We are out here at our install, getting ready to get started. We got new cabinets here. Customers been nice enough to cover up all the stuff on the inside for us. We're laying out our templates right now just to make sure how everything fits. And then we're going to get started. Um, I will touch base with you throughout the install, let you see any problems we encounter and how we solve them. Um, I appreciate you watching and uh, I will touch base with you here shortly. Alright guys, um, we've got our first issue here that we've got to overcome. So what we've got, we've got the sink top here. Well, we've got the template to the sink top. <clears throat> but our sink top matches this. So, if you look, we've got an opening here. It's going to be open here and here. We've got our knee wall here. And then, of course, we've got our cabinets with our sinkhole here. <clears throat> well, it juts out around. So, this has to go behind that. And then it has to come around here, okay? As you can see, physics doesn't allow it to do that. See, this here is going to hit into this wall here. And then this here is going to hit into here. So our only option is to pull this piece of trim off here. And then we'll take this drywall out here so that this can go through and swing around and pop it in. Then we'll just have to notch that for the uh, stone or whatever and uh, pop it back on there. But uh, anyway, there's usually a way you can figure out how to do something. The name of the game when you're making a job is to make as few seams as possible. You don't want to cut your kitchen up and make it look like a jigsaw puzzle. So you want to have as few seams as possible and make it look as clean as possible. So I just want to show you all what we had and I'll show you all the outcome. But uh, we're going to get busy and take this trim off and then see if we can make this template fit. It's always easier to try with your template that weighs maybe a pound as to bring your top in here with a sinkhole in it that weighs a couple hundred pounds. So um, I'll touch base with you here in a second. All right, guys, we are finishing up everything here. Um, got the sealer on. I still got to go over the aftercare with the customer and I still got to run some painter's caulk around here. Uh, but the cabinet guy scared the customer about taking drawers out and things like that. Um, so he told her that the drawers were very hard to get get in, so not to take them out. But anybody that does granite or has got granite knows that when you have a seam, you have to get to the underside of it. You have to be able to get in here to uh, put some epoxy on the bottom side of the seam there. Also over here i had to get a bunch of shims up in there because this side dropped down uh quite a bit so uh, i just uh just want to show how easy these drawers are to put in and they are the easy close the slide ones but um almost every drawer i work with is that style so this is the only drawer i took out and the only one i messed with I don't even have to stick my head up under here to see uh, what it is. It's got little handles that you take your hands and you pull in on them. That allows you to pop the drawer right off. If you look up under here at the camera, you can see those, okay? All you do in this situation with the drawer, I always just pull the things out. I set the drawer on it. I take my hand and I slide it so that it clicks. Stop like doing that, but uh, you want these little things here to click in. This one here is kind of being a pain, but we will get it. One side's in. So we got these little holes back here 
And then we got these metal pieces right here. You see those? Those should slide into these holes. Okay, now we got the drawer in spot. Okay, we want to make sure those little metal pieces go into the holes. That's not sleeping. I don't know why. Normally you just pull them and they snap. Clip on is what I had to do with this one. It's weird. mechanism right here is supposed to lock down on there guys it's got a little hole in here and this is supposed to lock into that hole no it's not I don't know this one over here it locked in just fine it clamped in there there's not and it has nothing to do with it being a drawer that uh, is a uh, there it went. Fucked in there now. I had to lift it up and kind of slide it down on there. Um, these are weird. I would, uh, I don't think anybody should have to worry about ever taking their drawer out because they're hard as crap to get in. There's something going on with these clips here that make it not easy, but as you guys can see, I got it in there. It did take me a lot longer than I thought it would, but, uh, that's weird. Uh, it shouldn't be like that. You should be able to set the drawer in there, slide it out, those pop in, and that's it. But uh, that's not the case. I will agree with them. It is hard to get them in there, but it shouldn't be. If I'm paying top dollar for new cabinets with sliding drawers, I want them to be able to easily snap in there and snap out in case I need to pull the drawer out. But anyways, y'all seen this in there. It wasn't a two-second thing like I thought it would be. Tony has caulked out most of everything. All we're going to do is just finish caulk. Or finish silicone. We're using transparent white because it matches the, uh, the color granite we got. always spray it with alcohol if you spray your silicone with alcohol it will not go anywhere except for where you want it to go so you can have a nice clean bead and not one of those two finger thick beads you always want to make sure when you're cleaning that you get all the light out pin off of there too before you silicone it, preferably. And if it gets dry on you, go ahead and spray it again. Alright, you just want to you know, do a secondary look over, make sure you all the little spots and don't have any little holes or anything. Now on top of everything, I run a, a bead of paintable caulk. Um, you know, in case I want to paint the walls or anything like that. I don't know who in the world cut that hole like that, but uh, it must have had a bad hole in the front. They're saying I did it, but that's a big old hole. 
It was one that you recut because it was dry, oh. super dry. All right. Ideally, you don't want a hole like that, but it is usable. You don't have to throw it away. Feel free to complain about it as long as you're not the one that cut the hole. Um, <laughs> if you are the one that cut the hole and you complain about it, they will let you know. <laughs> uh, the customer is planning on putting some uh, the stick on tile up here. So I'm just going to caulk it out for them just so it looks like a finished product until they get their tile up. Instead of the uh, denatured alcohol on the painter's coat, you want to use water. The denatured alcohol does not work good on paintable coat. The water does, however. And the painter's caulk is not something that's required to do on a job site. We just do it because it, it gives the customer a little more protection and I think it looks better. And I'm willing to spend an extra two or three dollars on a bottle of painter's caulk so that the job looks more finished. You want to make sure that your guys that help you on the truck fill up your water bottles before you leave the shop so that you're not running out of water while you're spraying your painter's coat. Then after I run my plumber out of if it's rough behind it, it's, it's not gonna be the most beautiful thing in the world. But uh, I wanna make sure you get all you can off of your stone. Over here. Um, I don't know if you remember on the beginning I showed you we had to remove this. As you can see, we have put it back in. There's a gap here, which it has nothing to do with us. But just to be a nice to the customer, I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of beta silicone or painter's caulk on here. It just makes it look like it connects well. Um, you want to be careful wiping on any of these nails in here. But once that dries, it'll be a little more solid for them. And uh, if they want to run another bead and just, uh, you know, make it a little smoother or whatever, they can do that. Um, on a job site you just you know what you want to do everything you can do to uh, make the job look the best you can uh, I mean I'm not telling you to do hours of work that's not your part but you know if it's a little thing like caulking a little spot that doesn't have anything to do with you it's not gonna hurt you to do it if you already got your caulk guns and stuff out and I know you can it can turn into something that's not, but I don't think this one's going to be too much of a big deal. These nails are making it a little hard to wipe really good. So. So what Colin's doing right now, guys, is just picking up our rugs. We always cover the customer's floor. Uh, that way we don't damage it. I know they're getting a new floor here, but it's still don't, still don't hurt to cover it up for them. You know, even if they are getting a new floor, it might not be tomorrow, and you don't want to get dirt and stuff on there, or epoxy, or a chemo, or anything like that. Then after we clean up the rugs, we will sweep the floor. 
get in. We got razor blades, we got tape, we got stuff all in the floor here, so uh, we'll sweep it up. You always want the customer's house to look as good as it did when you got there. There's a little bit of something on the bottom of the refrigerator there. So whether we get it or not, we're gonna spray that with water, make sure you get that out. Sure, even if it's not us, that we get that off. Uh, you know, just, just want to do your best to clean up your area. All right. Did I just not just see the broom in here? Was there any broom? Yes. Could have sworn I just saw the broom. It was in here. I brought it up myself. I know he didn't just take that broom out. Probably. That's one thing it is frustrating, guys. If you've got new guys, I don't know if there's anything more frustrating. I can do that sleeping. Huh? I'll do the sleeping. Don't worry about it. Oh, no problem. It's not. It's not a problem. I just had to borrow your broom because my new guy, I think, just took mine out before I even got to use it. Well, he probably thought you straight. Yeah, they have a tendency to do that with all your tools. Be like, where's the hammer? Oh, I took it out. I'll go get it. That's me mostly. Turn around, where's the sealer? Oh, I took it out. Well, go get it. Where's that sink at? Oh, I took it out. We well, didn't even mount it. Why would you take the sink back out? Oh, I thought we were finished with it. Now that's one I've never done. No. So, I mean, it's not a lot of stuff on the floor, but doesn't hurt us to sweep up and clean up our mess. We do carry a broom with us, but I swear I just seen it and then it was gone when I turned around and used it. Since he took the dustpan, I'm just spraying a little water on it. So There's a dustpan right there in the, at the pantry door if you need one that bad. Alright, thank you. I sprayed some water on it and it allowed me to pick it up with the paper towel. And that's it, guys. Uh, I think the job turned out very well. We, we went ahead and did a surface polish on the sink. So it turned out really nice. Um, so uh, we ended up splitting this raised bar. It's eight inches. We spoke with the customer about how they wanted it. We decided to split it. We've got approximately two and three eighths inches on each side. Once the silicone that's all up under it dries, it, it, it'll rip that knee wall down before it ever falls off. It'll never be an issue. Uh, we had to take this wood off and notch this drywall in order to get this top in here. Like I said earlier, you want to have the minimum amount of seams in the job as you possibly can. We've got the one seam and that's it. So a lot of places would have put a seam right here too, slid that in, put that together and all that. So. Um, I prefer to make the tops as big as possible with as few seams. I think I just think it looks better. And uh, it's a uh, 4:52 on February or September the third, and uh, we're finished. I'm gonna go over the uh, aftercare sheet with the customer, and we'll get out of their hair and let them enjoy the weekend. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.